for the corporate environment, oh God. Nevertheless, God, we just want to be with you, Master. So this hour, oh God, hear our petition, oh God. Grant our request, oh God, as we come to you, King of glory. Just fill this place. God, saturate this house with your love. Saturate the auditorium. Saturate this platform, oh God. Saturate the foyer, oh God. Saturate the lobby, the parking lot, God. Saturate the sidewalk, oh God. Oh, King of glory, just fill this place. We just want to be with you, God. Just want to be with you. Come on, one more time. King of glory. King of glory. Fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. That's a good place to be right there. I don't know about you, but I can sense his presence. I can sense his peace and his power. Ooh, God's doing something in somebody's heart right now. God's doing something in somebody's body right now. God's reconciling somebody's thought process right now. Come on, this is a good place to be. Woo! Now, if you need God to do anything, if there's any emergency that you may be facing right where you are, just lift your hand and just tell God, God, that's me. He knows your name. He knows your situation. Just say, God, that's me. I, I, I need you, oh God. I know you're here. Now, God, deal with my matter. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Manifest your glory, oh God, in that life. Manifest your glory, oh God, in that family. Manifest your glory in that situation, God. Oh God, something good is happening right now. Oh King of glory, you're here. Show yourself strong, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Somebody's heart's being reconciled back to God. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost, have your way in this house. Woo! Shalabako shataba. Ebalababa babako shatala babako shatata. Robabaka shatata. Come worship him, worship him. Something good is happening right now. Worship him. Ah. I sense that weight, I sense that weight you've been carrying is no longer weighing you down. Now, come on, this is a good place to worship. You would not want God our Father to show up and then not do what he's already planned on doing. I'm talking to so many of you. I'm talking to the thousands that's watching around the globe. But I know that weight that you, oh my God, that weight that you walked in here with, that weight that you tuned in with, it's falling off of you right now. Ah. Father, we thank you. God, we praise you, and we do it all in the name that's above every name, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. Can we give God praise right there where we are? Can we give God praise right there where we are? Can we give God praise right there where we are? Come on, open your mouth and clap your hands. Celebrate like you know God has done something for you.
Celebrate like you have already experienced the move of God. Come on. That's right. Celebrate. Woo. Hallelujah. Can we give him praise one more time? Hallelujah. My God, this is good. My God, this is good. My God, this is good. Ooh. Hey, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. High five somebody and tell them it's a good place to be. This is a good place. Come on, high five another person. Just tell them, man, this is a real good place to be. This is a real, real good place. Yeah, yeah. Come on, love on somebody. Come on, I... Come on, love on somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our glory to God. My God today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. yeah. Hey, glue. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of hell. Hey, <laughs> hey glue. Joy unspeakable. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm happy. Oh, glory to God. If his eyes on the sparrow, I know he's watching over me. I'm, I'm just happy this morning. Oh, glory. My God, my God, my God. Yeah. I hear the Lord saying he's pouring the wine back into your life. The joy. Oh. If we mess around, we're going to be drunk in the spirit this morning. My. Yeah. Can we get about 30 more seconds of praise? That's, I, I can't, I can't get up off of it right now. But I, yeah, about 30 more seconds. Hey! time you get home today there's gonna be a new fragrance in your house the odor you left when you got here today that odor will not be in your house there's gonna be a fresh fragrance This aroma of sweetness. Woo! Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. There's a miracle in this auditorium with your name on it. All you got to do is put a praise on it. Can we give him praise? 
Ah, yeah. We better sit down. Let's get ready for. Yes. Well, we already here. Yeah. Yeah. The usher at the back door right here to my right, y'all left. God told me to tell you that long life is your portion. Don't concern yourself about any medical reports. Oh, God, wish I had some help. Don't concern yourself about any medical reports. Long life is your portion in Jesus' name. Hey, let me prophesy this morning. Hey, glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Long life is your portion, saith the Lord. Ah. Oh, my God. Don't concern yourself about any doctor's reports. God says he's got all of that under control. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles run and not be weary. Walk and they shall not faint. You can mark my words. You have a testimony that will astonish many because they don't believe that you believe in the God that we serve. But today is your day, saith the Lord. I satisfy you with long life. Somebody shout, I'm not satisfied yet. I say somebody shout, I'm not satisfied yet. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Hey, glory. Shout, I'm not satisfied yet. Hey, glory. I'm excited. Well, I came to church for this, y'all. One of the things I, I am, I, some, one of the things that really just edges me when folk just come to church. I come to church on purpose for a purpose. Rather you want to come or not. If two of us would gather together in his name, he'll be a God in the midst. I know I'm going to get myself here and I'm going to get Sabrina here. If nobody else shows up. We still going to be in the midst of God. Hey, glory to God. But since you're here, we ought to go ahead and give him praise. Since you're here. <laughs> I feel like prophesying this morning. That fella right there, stand up. I hear the Spirit of God saying, restoration. God's going to restore your mind. God's going to restore your marriage. God's going to restore your money. God's going to restore everything that concerns you. You're going to turn into another man by the 21st of this month. You will be detained by God 
and God's going to accelerate you not just on the outside but God says I'm going to do it on the inside you're going to bring joy like they've never seen before and everybody who says you would not make it your new life is going to make them out of a lie in Jesus name thus saith the Lord let me prophesy this morning returning unto you what the palmer worm and the canker worm has robbed you of. Woo, glory to God. You go ahead and prepare a vacation. Lord Jesus Christ, God says he wants you to act like him. Just like he prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies, he wants you to go home and prepare a vacation in the presence of your negative situations. God said, don't let your situations stop you from dreaming. Don't let your situations prohibit your vision for your family. Something new is about to take place in your life by the 21st of this month, in Jesus' name. My God, I wish I had some help up in here. Woo-wee! Yeah. It's a good. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Bako Shela Bahara Baba. Can we praise him one more time? My God, that's good to me. Oh God, somebody shout God first. I hear you, Holy Ghost. There she go right there. There's a, there's an oil on you. God will use you to lay hands on sick people. It's a gift that many desire to walk in, but God says, for I am the Lord thy God that I have chosen you. Be not dismayed, saith the Lord. Fear not, saith the Lord. For I will lead you by my spirit. I will guide you and keep you safe in my provision. For the hour has come for I shall glorify you that I might be glorified through you, saith the Lord. Thank you, Father God. For my work in you has just begun. In Jesus' name, can y'all give God praise? Oh, <laughs> I love him, his presence. So today, 
All glory to you, O oh God. We worship you, God. Your presence in this place is Shilabakus. God first. You first always, God. Yeah. It's done. He declared it. In Jesus' name. Can we praise him one more time? Can we celebrate those that's watching us from around the globe? Come on, let's give them a... Welcome to our 10 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning worship service. And uh, just like I believe, there'll be an encounter from the Almighty God. Every now and then, I don't come to church just to preach. I come to experience his presence. I trust that those of you who watch us from around the globe, I trust that you have the same experience. There is no distance, and there's nothing that can get between the power of God. And so even like what we are experiencing in the auditorium, surely, I suggest you get in a place where you're not so easily distracted because I have a word from the Lord that's going to really, really bless your life. God's given us direction that we may continue to improve and grow in life. And uh, he has you in mind. Something good is about to happen. In Jesus' name, can we celebrate them? If this is your very first time fellowshipping with us here in the auditorium, can you please stand? Don't say anything. Just stand and let some people around you just love on you. See, if this is your very first time, please stand. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Oh, yeah. Those of you who are watching us for the very first time, we thank you so very much for being a part of our Sunday morning worship service. And uh, I know for a fact you are going to really be blessed by what's going to take place by way of the word here in the next couple of minutes. Pastor Briggs, he just loves love sharing God's word. And I know I have a word in my heart from God just for you. It's going to set things in course. Your year 2023 will be one of that due season that God has promised. Thank you again. Let's celebrate all of our first time visitors one more time. All right, just a few particulars and then I'm gonna praise the worship. Y'all stay right there because I'm gonna give you all a chance to, I guess I said I'm gonna give you all a chance. I'm gonna ask you all to sing another song while I go regroup and come back and teach the word. Is that all right? I'm all caught up right now. And if I, if I stay right here, we won't get no, we won't get no word right today. Here. I got to get, but I got to teach this word. You understand? <laughs> I feel like prophesied this morning. I came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, listen. In the, uh, these are my particulars. Go out there to the information center. And ask whoever's sitting out in the information system, what's going on around the church this week? Those are the announcements for today. <laughs> we have some people out there, uh, Maurice and Vashonda. Could y'all be out there and make sure all of the people know what's happening in this church? Because I refuse to read that today. That's just not a part of my... Uh, it's today <laughs> to the Bishop, First Lady, Sabrina, all Truth and Fellowship Ministry family, I'm so deeply thankful to you on how you love and support me doing the transition of my grandmother. There's no church family like TFM. My family and I uh, oh, so, are so grateful <clears throat> to God for people such as yourselves. Love, Andre and Stephanie Marie, Andre, grandmother. We eulogized it yesterday, and so uh, thank y'all for your love and how you just kind of uh, show your love when people doing times like those, okay? And uh, can we give Andre a very great round of applause? He is a, he is a very, very, very amazing stand-up guy not only in this church y'all but outside of this church he represents the kingdom of god first 
very well. He represents his family very well. And he represents this church very well. Again, can we bless him? Well, I'm going to turn it over to praise and worship. I need me about two minutes, and then I'm going to come back, receive the offering, and teach the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know we came to praise his name. Amen. Because <laughs> he's worthy to be praised. We bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a great shout of praise. Well, it's time to worship God without giving. Can I get about 10 excited people? Those of you watching us around the globe, listen to me very, very closely. Along with those of you who are in the auditorium, hey, this is our time of worshiping God. Also, we worship God not only uh, in our living, but we worship God with our giving. 
And so uh, we believe here at Truth and Fellowship Global Outreach Ministry that the quality of life for every born again believer is directly connected to his willingness and her, his commitment to covenant with God and God's word when it comes to giving. Now we have four types of giving, four ways of giving, and four giving venues. We believe in the tithe, and that is 10% of what you earn belongs to the Lord. The scripture says it's holy unto the Lord. The scripture says that all of it belongs to not 8%, not 7.5%, but 10% of what you earn belongs to the Lord. So we believe in the tithe. We believe what God has promised us. Our faith is exactly what he said, that he would open up the windows of heaven. He would pour us out a blessing that we do not have room enough to receive. Now, we don't want you to miss. Uh, uh, we'll, I'll give you the updates on the service in February because I got to tell you, we are an amazing giving church. You all did an amazing job in 2022. Come on, give yourselves a great round of applause. Uh, and so I'll be talking about that at our special service because, you know, February 7th, we'll be 29 years old. I believe 29 years old, February 7th. Amen. 29 years in the ministry. Let's put it that way. And so uh, we want you to understand the tithing component. I'll be sharing real soon about that. But that is God's plan for you and I to live under a open window heaven. Now, an open window heaven does not mean that God's going to pour you out money out of a window. That does not mean that. It means that he will give you wisdom and creative insights concerning financial affairs. He will allow you to, to understand and see and do things like never before. Even when you're not thinking, I was talking to Lady Sabrina yesterday and one of her uh, 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 financial partners called her and told her how to move some money to out of the blue. They were talking, they were talking late at night and late at night and late at night. I guess they just cut the devil out. You know, he sleep, they up, you understand. We'll play it like that me uh, on yesterday she said uh, I got this information from my, my partner and uh, I move I moved some money around and I said there it is right there now watch this right here what if she had not been a tither God would not be obligated to give her information he said I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you would not have room enough to receive and that's what the tithe bring the tithe the tithe sets it up where you do not lose anything he says I will also rebuke the devil, the devour for your sake. That's the devil. Anything that will try to devour what God has put in your hands, God says, I'll stop it. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 let's, let's take it on in a little deeper. That means that your children can't manipulate you for money. That, that, that means that your flesh, your, you know how your flesh like to have stuff because you got something? It's amazing how you want something when you got something. God says, I'll rebuke the devour for your sake. And then he says, I will set you up. I'll set you up so that all nations will call you blessed. That's what we receive as a result of our tithing. Then the, the scripture we, tells us about giving of the offering. The offering is uh, uh, the grace of God. We step into the favor of God. Now, God does not put a percentage on it. God does not put an amount on it. He leaves it up to you. It's a discretionary gift that he allows you to decide on. But remember, if you give sparingly, that's how you're going to get it back. Now, either way, you're going to get. But don't be believing for the much more, but you give the little bit. No, because that's not how it works. But he does say he's able to make all grace abound towards you. Now, I love the grace of God because the grace and favor of God is the willingness of others to use their power, their influence, and their abilities to help you. Watch this right here. When, until you get your feet on the ground. God has this thing set up that when I give the best that I can, when I give based on my discretion, he's going to fix it. Where everywhere I go, I will not be a stranger. Yeah, he favors me. And then he says, I'm going to fix it that anytime you're ready to do something good, you will always have all sufficiency and what now? All things. You will never be in, let me prophesy this morning. Somebody shout out, never be in lack. I'll never be in lack. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm getting happy right now. Woo, Lord Jesus. And then we believe in the seed principle, the seed 
sowing principle, we believe that when we sow seed, we receive harvest. You know, that's one of the things that God told me this year in our due season. In, the, in our due season, not our new season. We're not in a new season. When somebody said, we are not in a new season. Listen to me closer. Don't go around running your mouth because you hear other people say it. Sometimes we got a tendency to watch TV and just because the people on TV say it, we think they're accurate. Hello? You're not in a new season. You are not going to shut down what you've done in time past because that still has value. You are in your due season. Say, I'm in my due season. Yeah, Lord Jesus. And so as we sow seed, we have a right to harvest. Oh, my God. I love it, too. That's, and I'm excited about it because I remember sowing seed back in January of 2022. So I, I, use, I use the system. I use God's system. I use the childbirth, childbearing system. Okay. When she find out she's pregnant, she got nine months. Every time I sow seed, nine months after that, I'm expecting harvest. But if I keep seed going all the time, I always have birthing period. If it works for a baby, it's going to work for my harvest. I y'all ain't hear what I just said. If it works for you, a woman, to be able to carry a child, y'all better hear me. So I've been working this principle for 18 plus years. That's why I always have harvest. Because I'm always delivering a baby. Because the earth has already conceived seed. I wish I had some help up in here. While the earth remaineth, there's what now? Seed time and harvest. And then finally, I believe in the sacrifice. And that is three times a year, we have the opportunity to sacrifice. And then periodically, God speaks to people. I wish I had some help up in here. God speaks to people and uh, he'll tell them to do some sacrificial things. And uh, when they do so, something supernatural happens. I, re, I, I was thinking about, it's so amazing, and she's in here today. Um, can I use you for a testimony? Can I, can I tell you a testimony? Yes. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise it. Oh, y'all give uh, uh, my daughter a great round of applause. Come on. <laughs> that girl right there. Help me. I encountered my daughter many years ago. She was a part of another church. We won't call her name. And um, I was doing a financial increase lesson workshop via television, doing a television show. And uh, some things encountered that was uncertain with her. She did not like what happened while I was there. And because I handled it like a man of God, she said the day I walked out, she said, one day that's going to be my pastor. She said, that's a man of God. Now, in the process of her making the decision to be a part, uh, uh, and she had some other issues going on in her personal life. How, how many surgeries you had? She had 34 surgeries. But she was so, so confident that if I could get seed into this man's hand, I was not going to die. And when there was times when she thought it was over, she would call and say, Dad, I could hear your voice. Say, you ain't going nowhere. I told her I would beat her back to life. The thing was, her sacrifices was not about any money. It was about God doing something supernatural in her life. It was about, boy, Sabrina and I was talking about it yesterday. And when I, when I looked at her this morning, I'm like, look at how good God is. Look at how good God is. No, we have the testimonies. So years ago, a couple of years ago, I can't remember. She said I could tell the whole story. So a couple of years ago, I was in one of these locations and I, I said because I sensed it I said somebody is going to give me ten thousand dollars cash well little did I know she was sitting on that seat saying it's gonna be me well I ain't hear none of that well some months I don't know how long ago how, do you recall how long ago from that uh, about a few years later uh, 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 sh she comes to the office one day one of these days I'm tired don't feel like being bothered you know you Y'all got children sometimes you don't feel like being bothered with? Wave at me. Where my grown people at? Okay, good. I ain't feel like being bothered with her today, that day. So she come in and said, Dad, I need to see you. I said, but I ain't feel like all that, man. Like, Dad, I really need to see you. And I'm like, oh, man, I ain't messing with it today. So I said, baby, please go see what your daughter need because I clear to God. I don't want. So Sabrina went in the back in my office 
And then about not too many minutes later, Sabrina said, hey, well, honey, uh, you probably need to come on up in here. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, praise the Lord. I get in there. So she began to tell the testimony of how I was that person. I was that person. I knew I was that person. She went in that. She, you, now I, go, I go to this little place called the Red School, the schoolhouse, the schoolhouse, right? And I go get me a half a pound of um, fat back, fried fat. Y'all like fat back? We have in church, y'all. Why y'all try to act like y'all ready to get to the word? Because you know I'm going to come for you in the word. You better, li- you better laugh as much as you can right now. Because you ain't going to be laughing in about three minutes. Now let me get through the offering. Somebody, that, thank y'all. They, they run and tell me, hurry up, pal. No, I'm going to tell the whole story. So she went, goes in the bag and she pulls out $10,000 cash. And she says, I was that person. She says, I was that person that sat there and said, I'm going to be, the, I'm the one. I'm the one God's talking to. I didn't know who the somebody was. That's why you never put a face on who God is doing. Look at somebody and say, you never put a face on. See, I could have thought she, you gave all her money. All her money could have gone to her health care and medicine. But no, she still sacrifices. And even now, even to this day, she still makes sacrifice. And that's why I have nothing less than believe the supernatural move of God will always be over her life. In Jesus' name. Always. Because that's what the sacrifice does. So I want to give you an opportunity to uh, obey God with either returning your tithe, giving your offerings, Sowing your seed is sacrificing. We know it's God's plan for our lives. We know God is up to something amazing. So on the screen, those of you who are watching us around the globe, on the screen there is ways that you can give. You can text it in, cash app it in, you can mail it in. Those of you who are in person, if you, uh, you can do yours on the phone, pull your phone out now and put it back because you don't really need it for scriptures. We put the scriptures on the screen, you know, so all the other texting and stuff y'all doing while I'm preaching. Okay, let's get back to the offering thing. Uh, so those of you in person, if you need a special envelope, you can raise your hand. The ushers will give you an envelope. We have some, some beautiful, we have the ladies, they're ushering in the center today. They got the men up against the wall, y'all. I like that. Look at the ladies. Can y'all give them ladies a great round of applause? Uh, come on here. Oh, dress up in here. And they holding them buckets like you better not put your hand in them buckets. I, I like the ladies ushering better than the men. The men look too lackadaisical. Them ladies, them ladies be like, touch this bucket if you want to. So listen, if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. Let's get, uh, worship God with our giving. God loves a what now? Cheer forgiver. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to ask praise and worship to sing. Ushers, you can go ahead and receive. On, stay on the screen so they'll know how they can participate for those of you who are participating. And so let's glorify God with our giving in Jesus' name. Amen. Just have some in the back, all of the late. Give us come on, let's stand to your feet. Let's prepare to declare the word of God over our our uh, seed. Come on. Come on, repeat after me. Say, I am a wealth creator. I am a wealth creator. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, I am a wealth creator. I am a wealth creator. Abundance is my birthright. Abundance is my birthright. I will always seek wealth knowledge. I will always seek wealth knowledge. I will follow my divine path to prosperity. I will follow my divine path to prosperity. Everything I need. Everything 
I already have. I'll always and only accept the best that life has to offer. I will not be a victim to circumstances. I will not be a victim to circumstances. Everything right now is working for my greater good. Wealth is in me. Wealth is around me and is always available to me. I will always use money to build assets. I will make, I will manage, I will multiply my money for wealth. My self-worth and my network are being built daily in Jesus' name. Amen. Give them praise right there. God bless you. you. May be seated. I'm excited to have the opportunity to share with you the Word of God uh, uh, today. You know, uh, January is Vision Month for us, but it's also God First. It's also God First Month, and um, Spirit of the Lord has given me the Word in uh, to begin in the month of January. I shared with you. I'll be in this Word talking, of teaching from the subject of implementing growth strategies for your life. Implementing growth strategies. And this is for your life, but you can use this for your business. You can use this for your church, however you want to do it, because uh, we are driven to improve and grow in life. This is our second year. You know, I told you we have 48 months, two more years, this, uh, three more years, including this year. It's our second year. Every year, we're just driven to improve and grow in life. On last week, as I started the lesson of teaching, I said that the strength of our lives are directly connected to you and I, our willingness to improve and grow. And so we have to commit ourselves, open our hearts up to grow based on how God would have us to grow. So let's pray and get right on into it. Father, I thank you again for the time around your word. Thank you for these precious people, those who are watching us from around the globe, and even those, oh God, who are here in the auditorium. And God, I pray that you be glorified as a result of my obedience to teaching your word to your people in Jesus' name. And everybody who agrees, say amen. Again, like I said, I'll spend the entire month uh, teaching you on this topic, and um, I'll I'll be talking about how it's important to you and grow in our families, personally and corporately, uh, how we grow in our business, how we grow in life, period. You know, um, uh, uh, something amazing is taking place in the atmosphere around the world. Let nobody fool to something. Amen? Okay. Is that me? Is that me? My mic keep going out? Oh, it could be. I could have the cable. Y'all straighten that out back there, please. Uh, uh, so, so I want to start out by, I want to give you this scripture, and then I want to move on into, I'm going to review a little bit, and then I'm going to move on into what God gave me. Today, I, I want to give you the ingredients. I want to give you the ingredients to improving and growing in life, uh, 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 and that's called my big picture. And I, I won't give you all of them, but I'll give you a few of them today. Take me over to Psalms 92.5. I'm going to read from the 5th through the uh, 15th verse because I just love that particular passage of Scripture. It's a prophetic Scripture uh, uh, about our lives. So Psalms, come on, 92, and let's begin at 5. In the New Living Translation, too. I love it in the New Living Translation. So if we can get there, that'll be real good, and then we're going to watch God do exactly what he said he's going to do. Psalms 92 and 5 uh, in the 15th verse. Amen. Okay, I'm... Our computer's still down? Or I just need to get the scriptures up there. Y'all look at each other and stare. No, let's just have fun. Okay. No, you just, see, hey, listen. I had a dream the other night. No, real talk. I had a dream the other night. And in the dream... There was some people, it was, it was our church. It was huge, anywhere between 15 to 2,000 people. And it was at an Easter service. It was in an Easter service. And while in the dream, in the dream, um, man, we was having such good time. And then all of a sudden, the sound went out. And so to get from the pulpit to the sound room, it was a long walk. And I was walking, but I saw so many loving people. I said, oh, my God, I saw, the people were smiling. and The people were so loving. And so when I got to the room, I was, I was frustrated because there's no reason why the sound should be out. We already had it set. 
And so what happened was um, I noticed something was moved. And when I noticed that something was moved, I said, the reason why the sound went out, because we moved something we should not have moved. And so then I turned around and walked out. And the Spirit of God says to me, you have matured. Now, normally I would be so upset because I believe in excellence. But I did not even get upset, Dr. Price. I just walked out. And when I walked back out, the people in the church was just smiling and laughing. Nobody was upset, just like how y'all was doing when the scripture didn't come up. Look at how my dream just came true. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the scripture. Now, I used to get upset about stuff. I don't get upset anymore because, you know, either, either, either it is. You can't, you can't help a machine. And then if it's human error, God can help them too. But, you know, you don't get upset anymore. You just learn to love God. And y'all understand, right? That's why I love this. I told you, I told Sabrina my dream. I told you, baby, they just, we just love this church. We got love in church. Look at what it says. Okay, let's go to work, Pastor. Oh, Lord, what great works, uh, works you do. How deep are your thoughts? Next verse, sixth verse. Only a simpleton would not know, and only a fool would not understand this. Seventh verse. Though the wicked sprout like weeds and evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, O oh Lord, will be exalted forever. Your enemies, Lord, will surely perish. All evildoers will be scattered. But you have made me as strong. Now, somebody say he's talking about you. Now he's talking about you. But you have made me as strong as a wild ox. You have anointed me with the what now? Finest oil. Next verse. Look, my eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the defeat of my wicked opponents. But the godly will do what now? Flourish like a what? Palm trees and grow strong like what? The cedars of Lebanon. Thirteenth verse. For they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They shall do what now? Flourish in the courts of our God. Even in the what now? Old age, they will do what? Still produce fruit. That's what I'm trying to tell my mama. They will remain vital and green, 15th verse. They will what now? Declare the Lord is just. He is my rock and there's no evil. Mm -hmm. Implementing these growth strategies, being driven to improve and grow in life. When you hear me speak about in and you you'll hear about it. When you hear me speak about, on it, uh, uh, it, it, I'm talking about several things. Number one, I'm talking about excellence, your attention to detail, excellence, your attention to detail, living a life and a lifestyle of excellence. I, I love excellence. I love it. You know, it costs more, but the dividends pay off great. Excellence, excellence. You know, you know um, like I was looking at praise and worship. I was looking at the colors and how they were dressed so nice. I just think that's excellence. I was looking at the ushers. It gets my attention how they were, they were standing all ready to receive the offering. They weren't throwing buckets around. They had them all ready. That is excellent. I was watching the ushers at the back door, how they was greeting the people and letting the people in. That is excellence. I was watching my operations uh, director and how he was informing me of what's going on, change this and change that. And I thought it was Excellence. Everything is excellence. Excellence is the attention to detail. Matter of fact, I'm going to give it to you in definition. Excellence is the attention given to detail that gives birth to superior performance that causes realization of maximum potential in life that brings glory to God. Now, I know y'all want me to give that to y'all again. Y'all get the CD on that one right there. You know, excellence. Excellence. What is Excellence, excellence, excellent. What did I say? Excellence, excellence. Say excellence. So when we talk about improving and growing in life, we want to learn to, uh, uh, to, to give uh, attention to details. We want to stop. We want to quit living just carelessly. We want to live a life we can glorify God. Come on. We want people to be excited. We want to show up and get people's attention. Not that we are all this or all that, but we're just people who are people of excellence. So in this lesson, as I begin to talk about it, 
I said that um, uh, for this to happen, for excellence to happen, there are two things, I'm just using two, there are two things that you have to pay close attention to, you have to establish in your life. Number one, you have to establish some disciplines. Some, <laughs> some disciplines, that simply is, there should be some particular methods or practices and behaviors, some particular rules, conduct, that you ought to give yourself to live by. Now, I'm going to get to the church. But you got to have some discipline. Come on, you just can't, you just can't be free. Ha, ha. I'm, a, I'm a mama, you say you're just free to you. My mama used to tell me, boy, you're so free to you, fool. <laughs> y'all parents used to tell y'all that. Wave at me if y'all grandparents. That's where you got that from, some of these other people <laughs> over there. No, she used to tell no, we got to have some disciplines. We have to have some particular behaviors of practices, methods, or the, the way we do things, I'm going to behave a certain way. You're not going to move me off of that. No, because that's my discipline to my excellence. And many times, we, if we don't watch it, it's amazing how, you know, I always used to do this. How many of y'all used to go to nightclub a lot like me? How many used to get new outfits? Come on, tell me. Come on, tell me. It's amazing how we would go and be entertained and we would go in excellence. But we come to the church, to the house of God, and we act like we can't be, have no attention to detail. You know, I'm still old school. I lay my clothes out on Saturday night. I'm old school. I got church clothes. How many of y'all got church clothes still? I still got church clothes. I grew up with church clothes. I lay them out. I can tell you. I don't have to. One thing, God, I will never be late because I couldn't find what I was going to put on. Hello. Now, I might be late because Sabrina running, but I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but I'll never be late because I believe in this attention to detail. I have, I was talking to Lady Sabrina yesterday and I was telling her how uh, my vehicles are set. I have certain vehicles that I use for my company. I have certain vehicles that I use for, 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 for work and the church. And what, I don't have information all scattered through all those vehicles. You're not going to find any church information in my work because uh, I'm attention to detail. Eh, eh, okay, okay, okay. You, you know, okay, let me break it home. home. So, so in other words, I can't say that. Yeah, I could. Just got to learn how to say it. So I have me a T-shirt drawer, and I have a sock drawer. You don't need your pantyhose in the same drawer as your Brazil. Did I say that right? That ain't right. See, that girl laughed like, what the word he talking about? You know, I don't know nothing about this kind of stuff here. Sabrina, what I'm talking about, huh? I can say that word. Okay. You don't need your pantyhose where your bra is at. Undergarments. Because then now you try, you know the little wire on the undergarment done rip your pant. Well, that boy preaching bad, they saying amen. I'm talking about excellence. That's excellence. I'm just, <laughs> I'm showing you. Excellence. So you got to have some discipline. There's some things that you just don't do. You got to establish some discipline because it's going to affect me improving and growing in life. And then number two, you got you to be strategic. You got to have some strategies, you know. Strategies are simply independent components to accomplish an objective in a designated time. That's all the strategy is. I have me some independent components. There are certain things I do, and I'll talk a little bit about my strategy, hopefully today, if time permits, but I'll talk about it. But you gotta have those things in your life. Now we said, we said that some of the disciplines, I gave you uh, 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 three disciplines, and I'm gonna give you two more today. Number one, we said, discipline number one is you must maintain your faith in God and his promises. Discipline. You must maintain your faith in God. You got to be disciplined. I'm going to trust God in spite of. Come on, say that out of your mouth. I'm going to trust God in spite of. Say it again. I'm going to trust God in spite. Hey, listen, TFM, listen to me. If something's not going well in your life and somebody walk, walk up on you and ask you how you're doing, say, say I'm going to trust God in spite of I'm doing well. What you going to say? Don't bring nobody no sad story. Well, you know, down through the years, nobody knows the troubles. Are. No, we don't need to do that. I'm going to trust God in spite of all is well. Say it out your mouth. I'm going to trust God in spite of 
all is well. So you got to maintain your faith in God, and you have to also maintain your faith in his promises. Number two, I said the discipline number two is you, you must intensify your prayer life. Say, I must intensify my prayer life. And, 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 and that is, I must become fervent in prayer, and I, I need to take prayer off a of speed dial. Amen. You know how you're driving and praying? Hello? Yeah. All right. You know good and well you cannot fervently pray and drive. You can't. You cannot fervently pray. So that means, that may mean you may have to get up a little early in the morning before you get on the road to go to work. Yeah. Hello? You, cannot, you can't even hardly shower properly and pray fervently. I, I can prove it. Don't make me. I can prove. Because you, you, you know how, when you start praying fervently, you, 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 you be quickening and stuff like that. And if you don't want the water to hit your hair. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen now. No, you know, you know, you already got your hair. You, you got that do-rag on your hair. You don't want your wave to boof back out. No, no, no. You got to take time and set time aside. You have to set time aside. People of God, God is calling us back to God. Now, it's a shame. It's a shame that the world is teaching the church how to pray. When my man got hit last week in the football game, DeMar Hamlin, let the whole world shut down and pray. Watch this here. Nobody, no preacher had to call for prayer. We didn't have to have a prayer vigil. We didn't have to light no candle. My God, everything shut down in a moment's time and everybody started praying. And look at the results right now in the matter of seven days. We got to get past that. We got to get past that. We have to get past that. We got to get back to God. We come to the house of God, we talk about how much we love God, we talk about how much, how good he is, but then we're always dealing with him on rapid response. We want to say something and we want to answer. We want him to move. No, we got to go back to fervent prayer. We got to get back to a place where we cry out to God. We got to get back to a place where our thirsting is, that we're going to give God some of our time. Oh, ain't nobody saying amen on that. No, we got to give God our time. We got to pull back. We got to get to a place where, wait a minute now, God, I got to give it up to you. I'm not, I'm not interested. Listen, and you don't need a prayer partner. Holy Ghost is your partner. Matter of fact, I'm kind of leery when people are always asking somebody to pray with them. Pray, come on, let's be in agreement. Well, I'm kind of leery about that because something in that prayer ain't going to come out right. No, no, oh, no, oh, no, no. Trust the pastor on this one. Yeah, it ain't going to come out right. You always got to find somebody to go in agreement with you and pray. I'm kind of leery of all that stuff. All right. Yeah. No, no, no. If you're, if you're a born-again believer, the Bible never said, and Moses went and got a bunch of folk to pray with him and be in agreement with him. Come on. I'm in covenant with God. I'm in covenant with Christ. I'm in covenant with Holy Spirit. I got my covenant partners. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to have corporate prayer, but I'm a little leery when every time you go through something, you got to go get you somebody to go along with you. Really, you're trying to get somebody to agree with you about something God didn't sanction. You know God didn't sanction that. And see, so you tell your narrative to that other person. I'm going to get off of that right there. I was teaching my wife yesterday about prophecy, how to receive a prophecy. Uh, I was explaining to her, see, it's one thing for a prophet to declare a word, but it's another thing, does that prophet want you to receive what he had to declare? See, just because he prophesied it don't mean he wanted you to receive it. Stephanie, tell me, please clear that up for me, Pastor. Jonah was assigned by God to send a message to Nineveh. He obeyed God, but he didn't want to. So he really didn't want Nineveh to get it. But because he had to obey God, he just said it. See, a prophet ain't nothing but a messenger. All he is is a container where God will put a message in him to tell somebody. And then when he got to tell the message, that don't mean he won't 
who that message is going to, he wants that person to have it because that prophet could be in his flesh too. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna talk about the, I'm gonna talk about my assignment too. I'm wise enough to know this. That's why you got you get a, you just the shout. You got to see. Look here. Not only did was it the word of God. Did did the can the prophet agree with me? Yeah. And then and you can always listen. I always listen to that stuff. I'm getting in trouble right here. Can I get in some trouble a little bit? Good. You got me. You can always tell when a prophet didn't agree because then the word be so good for you. They try to put yeah, and the Lord's gonna do it for me too. Well, dang, he ain't told you to say that. <laughs> he told you to tell this man or this woman this, and then, then you put the us in there and the we. It start out with you. Then you throw the us in there. Oh, where the us come from? There ain't no us. It's the we. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It ain't the us, it's the we. Hello, somebody. All right. So you got to pray. Say, I got to pray. And, 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 and this is the thing. Listen to me closely. But don't be alarmed by any of that. Watch this right here. Evilness, ungodliness, wickedness, all plays a part in your spiritual walk with God. Oh, y'all didn't know that. Listen to me. Watch this right here. Can I say it again? Evil, say it again. See, you got it, a woman of God. Evilness, unrighteousness, ungodliness plays a part. It helps you mature. Like Jesus didn't know Judas was going to do him like that. I learned, I appreciate the Judases that are around me. Because they keep me focused on not making a mistake because I know they're trying to trap me. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, see, y'all, I just, I curse them out of my life. No, let them stay right there. Because it helps me. See, see, it, see. <laughs> Glory to God. Sometimes y'all got to, y'all got to, that's how you pray. You got to pray. So number one, you got to have faith in God and his promise. Number two, you got to do what now? You got to pray. And then number three, you always got to give glory to God. Now, now y'all ain't going to save me on this fourth one I give y'all because I'm coming at you now. I done got through my review. I'm about to come at you. <laughs> you got to always give glory to God. It, no, no, you know, I'm telling you, Angie and them singers, they did a great job, didn't they? Come on, y'all give them a great round. Yeah. Angie, be real spiritual. Oh, that was God. Angie, that was not God. That was your body standing there. Those are your vocal cords. But you can give glory to God. You can thank God for equipping you with the ability to do what you've done to lead the people of God into the presence of God. See, we got to learn to give what now? Glory to God. I thank God daily for finding me faithful, putting me in the ministry. I give him glory. My life is his glory. I thank God, I thank God for doing the things that he does. It, all the glory and honor belongs to him. You got it? No way in the world. We say it all the time. If it had not been for Jesus, we wouldn't be where we are. Well, let's live by that. So we ought to give glory to what now? To who now? To God. All of it go to God. Now. So then we understand we got to get grounded. We got to get as a, as a people of people of God, y'all got to get grounded, man. You got to come on, get back from your little nasty foolishness. It, it don't, the Bible tells us in Psalms 92 that for un, wickedness and evil doings and all kind of crazy stuff, sarcasm and all that stuff like that, manipulation and all that stuff, that's going to come to an end. Look at his brother say, get over that, man, get over that. Yeah, okay, you know, we're going to talk about it in a minute. I'm getting to it. I'm, I'm saying it for a reason. Some of y'all act out right now because of number four, unforgiveness. I, can't, I couldn't wait to get to number four. The discipline, you're going to have to learn to discipline yourself to forgive. See, unforgiveness does not show in your life in the present it show up in your life on the pinnacle what you mean by that pastor see when you start rising that's when unforgiveness gonna show up mm. people say new levels new devils ain't no new devil the reason why you call it a new devil because the hell you're going through trying to get to the next level 
And the only reason why it's a struggle getting to the next level is because of your, your, your unforgiveness. You got to discipline yourself. Now, let's talk about that, y'all. <laughs> yeah, see, ain't nobody saying amen now. Oh, God. Can I get somebody to praise the Lord happy like y'all was early? Now, so when we talk, we say, number one, you got to have faith in God and his promises. Oh, number two, you got to pray. Number three, oh, you got to give God glory. Number four, you have to appropriate the forgiveness. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean, Pastor? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the act of giving someone who has hurt you or harmed you the benefit of not being penalized Amen. if they own their error. That's all forgiveness is. God, if they tell me, yeah, I was wrong on that. Okay, God, don't you penalize me. See, that's where most people are missing it. Much for God to let you play with me. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Everybody that leaves your life, they didn't leave your life because you've done something wrong. They left your life because their heart was wrong, and God said, you got to flee. Don't, don't cry all the time when folk leave your life. Oh, God. Don't say, I can't, I just can't, I can't forget him. Yes, you can. Quit going back to Egypt. God got you out of it. Quit wishing they get better. Let God deal with that stuff. You just move on. You're going to improve and grow in life. Leave stuff alone. Now, I'm going to show it to you in a minute. Y'all go get it. You go get it. You go say, what in the world? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the act of giving someone who has hurt you the benefit of not being penalized. You don't want nothing to happen to them if they own it. In other words, you can't forgive what a person don't own. So don't let anybody fool you. I got to forgive. No, 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 no. God can't forgive you until you own it. Could you take me to 1 John 1 and 9, please? Let me show you what forgiveness is all about. You got you to gotta work this now. Forgiveness is like a forgiveness is like a weight on some balloons with helium in them. On a balloon where healing is involved, helium is involved. The balloons want to rise, but the weight of unforgiveness is holding it down. Look at what it says in First John one and nine. Yeah, y'all smile till we get there. They, they trying their best. They doing it with the best they can, you know. We got to, and if y'all know other people who know how to do the scriptures and, and uh, the, the, the board back here on the back and in the technology, just, yeah, go ahead. I like to wait on them, though. We got time. Okay. First John 1, is, First John 1 and 9 says um, uh, uh, this way. If we confess our sins... He is what now? Faithful and just to do what? Okay, let's slow that down. If we confess our sins, God is what? Faithful and just to do what? Forgive us. So what if we don't confess our sins? Then God cannot be faithful and just to forgive us. So let me help you. Let me help you from the erroneous teaching you've been taught. If they don't honor as they wronged you, you have no room to forgive them. Because they first got to own it. They taught us forgive anyway. How can I forgive something somebody didn't own? If you confess your sin. I will forgive you. In other words, my prayer to God is, God, don't penalize them. Let them slide. Amen. That's what forgiveness is all about. That's what forgiveness is all about. Forgiveness. I am 
all for you not being penalized. Look at what the scripture says. It's, uh, it says, if they confess, if you confess your sin. Now, the Bible says, watch this now. If you say you have no sin, you're lying. So hunt somebody say, you might well go on it. You might well go on it. <laughs> you know. See. Okay. Uh, take me to uh, Hebrews 4 and um, 12, I believe it is. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Many times, I don't think people just arbitrarily. Huh? You, you up now? Okay, no worries. Man, I'm, let me tell you something. I'm so anointed. I'm so anointed. I don't, you know. I'm, I'm so anointed, nothing bothers me. Everything, God helps me locate everything. Y'all got to understand, I'm a pastor don't get bent out of shape by stuff no more. I'm a bishop in the Lord's church. I'm a grown man. Man. I'm, a, I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. Watch this here. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews uh, 4 and 12. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. And the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts. See, when you got the word in you, you can almost tell what a person's thinking. The word of God is a what now? Discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart of a man. See, many times, see, this is how you learn. This is how you learn to not let things bother you and you learn to appropriate forgiveness because you can regulate, you can tell their heart. See, if God show you they're operating out of a bad heart, why you let them keep operating with you? People don't get fired off the job because the boss man don't like them. The boss man saw their heart a long time ago. He just waited for the opportune time or he got to a place where he couldn't take it no more. Now, I had to fire an employee last year. I think it was last year. Last year. And it wasn't. It, was, it wasn't. There was no. It wasn't right. It wasn't right my tone and tenor. God, God rebuked me on that. I said, just pack your stuff and get out of this church and never come back again. That ain't right. Y'all praying for me? Yes, sir. What happened was I saw the heart of the person and I kept saying, if y'all work with the person's heart, I can deal with the person. Well, one I just fired, the other one I gave them chance to think through the process. I said, I'm not gonna fire you, I'm gonna keep you on payroll for a week. Don't ever come back to the church until you call me and tell me you thought through the process. And the person, I said, you're not fired. I paid them, I paid them to think about it. Cause you understand what I'm saying? Other person that was a little bit, that was a little off. I was off on that end, but uh, I still stick to what I said. Now how I handled it was wrong, Debbie. But what I said was right. And I asked God, what's the difference? He said, the difference was you addressed it early on, on one, but the other one, you saw the heart, you was giving the benefit, but the heart wouldn't get no better. And that thing caught you at the, at, I mean, it was one moment. It was a moment. One word triggered it. Settle it right now. Both of the people, both of the people came back to me. One person came and stood in front of me in the lobby in front of three other people and said, I have to say this publicly. Pastor Briggs, I'm so sorry. I was wrong, man of God. You was right about my heart. Forgive me. I said, man, I forgave you when you walked out the door. Just like that. Now they've gone on and doing well in life. The other person comes back. The other person redeems the time. The other person, you redeem the time. God redeemed the time. The, the situation happened. I told another member, I said, you know, uh, uh, it, my tone and tenor wasn't right, but what I said was right. I saw the person's heart. And they keep trying me, and it just, 
So the person was, that's why you always got to hang around folk. I'm going to teach y'all, you got to hang around a community of people that will keep you focused and grounded in God. The person was Brandy Calhoun. She stands up before me. I was in front of the person, and I was not going to say a word. And she says out loud, right where we were standing, he who wins souls are wise, and I looked back at her. And when I looked back at her, she was waiting to see what I was going to do with that person. And I said to that person, come go to dinner with me. And she, we got back. She sat down after, the, after dinner. She called me and said, sir, I want to tell you. She said, you're a real man of God. She said, I don't care what nobody say about you. You are my guy. No, I'll follow the Bible. I ain't going to follow your feelings, but I sure will follow the Bible. Hello, somebody. Watch this right here. The person comes back, and the two people that they, they crossed the line with, they came back and myself and said, I want to tell you, you are so right. Said, I had never had somebody to challenge me and check me, but you are so right. But I got it together. I said, okay, watch what God does. Now they are accelerated in what they're doing. You got to get to a place. No, I know y'all don't want to talk like this here because you want to hold stuff in your heart. You want to be silly because you're still holding an offense. Or you, you, you want to be silly because somebody made you feel bad or, or you said somebody hurt you. And many times people don't hurt people. Just because folk don't go along with your ways don't mean they're trying to hurt you. That's your ways. Let people live their life. So you got to forgive. Let me get to another scripture. And uh, thank you for this. Let me get to another scripture. Now, this is good to me. Let, me. let me let me show you Luke 11, 25. Come on, let's go down to Luke 11, 25. Yeah, that's we just go in the Bible. I got a, little, got a little iPad right here. Look at here. Praise the Lord. Luke 11, 25. Scroll on up. In the King James. But I'm going to get over and see if they got the new. Oh, they got the new living on there. Uh, this you, BJ? Dre. That boy read the Bible. Oh, wait. Luke 11, oh, Dre. Luke 11 25. Shit, boy. Look at what it says. Sabrina called this morning. He called to hand me the scriptures. He told you, now what you going to do? Now, Luke 11 25, quit playing. He says, um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Mark 11 25, not Luke. Mark eleven twenty five. 25, look at what it says now. Y'all ready to go? Okay, hurry up, Pastor, hurry up. Okay, you ready? Look at what it says now in the scripture. Y'all give me a little chance now. It says, 22nd verse says, Then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God, I tell you the truth, say to this mountain, may, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen for you, but you must, really, you must really believe it will happen, and no doubt in your heart. Then he says, I tell you, he, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you receive it, it'll be yours. Watch this. But, but when you are praying first, do what now? Wait. When you are praying, I ain't gonna read that. I don't read this right here. Y'all read that one. But when you are praying, first forgive. Anyone you are holding a grudge against. See, that's a discipline. You've got to discipline yourself. You'd be surprised as a pastor, as a man of God. You'd be surprised at what, how members treat me. You'd be surprised because I won't go along with how they want it to go. Because I realize that members, Sister Ella, if you don't watch, they think they're entitled. Amen. See, my kindness, Pastor Maxwell, my kindness, some, if I go too long, that's why I've learned to stay away because they can't handle the common areas of pastor. Because they think they're entitled. And then when you show them, wait a minute, you don't cross the line. All of a sudden, they get offended. Now, they'll never look at what they did. They gonna always look at how they've been treated. Hello, somebody. But you got to grow up. Somebody said, got to grow up. You got to forgive. The Bible says like this here, comfort the feeble-minded. Got to forgive. Y'all all right on the forgiveness? Say, say, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Now, now watch this here. So to forgive is an act of giving someone 
uh, who has maybe harmed you or hurt you, the benefit of the doubt of not being penalized if they own their error. Watch this right here. The word forgiven, to forgive means also to abandon. Abandon. The word forgiven also means to let go. The word forgive also means to walk away. The word forgive also means separate. So what God says, you have to separate from that feeling. See, if, can I come down for a, I ain't going all the way. See, if I do something to make you feel bad and I own it, every time it comes up, you shouldn't feel bad no more. And if you still feeling bad, you have unforgiveness in your heart because God says you have to abandon. Well, I, I can't forget it. I can't forget it. So what I do, pastor, I brace myself. You ain't forgave. If God didn't let him hurt you then, why you think he gonna let you hurt, hurt you next time? I brace myself. You know, you know how you're talking about you, like you can protect yourself now. Like you couldn't protect yourself beforehand. So why make you think you're some great protector now? No, I, 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 I brace myself. No, what you're simply saying is, you're simply saying that you really want that person to hurt like you. What's my word I'm trying to, mischievous? What's the word I'm trying to use? That's the word, mischievous, that's another word I want out there. Facetious, that's the word. I was, I was going to ask you anyway because we had done talked about that. See, you want to be facetious. You want folk to hurt like how you hurt. So you'll try to hit them where you think it would hurt them. Ooh, ain't, ain't nobody saying, that way out of amen. I'm trying to show y'all how we're going to improve and grow. See, so all right, all right, okay. Since, since y'all act like y'all ain't want to say amen, I'm going to get y'all delivered. Okay, if you know, okay, okay, if Miss Wineglass knows, I ain't, can I use y'all, Miss Wine, with just an illustration, because y'all mature, because if I use some other couple, they go home and fight about it. Don't y'all, if Miss Wineglass knows that Mr. Wineglass heart is toward this ministry, you got it? And if he does something like won't take her to dinner, it has nothing to do with this church. But she's going to take a shot at him. Church ain't worth nothing. Knowing good and well she shouldn't have done that. But she took a shot at him because she know where his heart is. That's how some of y'all act. Oh, I wish I had some help up in him. Some of y'all take shots at one another. And you know it ain't got nothing to do with the punch in the gut. But I'm telling you, God ain't going to let you poke the bear too long. You wonder why your life is dwindling down? You wonder like why you can't see your way, why you don't have no dreams and aspirations? You wonder why favor don't knock at your door no more? You wonder why you're struggling, you're tired, your body is swelling? You better check out forgiveness. God says I got to get, get you back to my first love. Take no shot at me. I call it low. I call it very low. It's real low. It's low. It's low. Low down, dirty, dirty, dirty. Oh, okay, okay, get back. I was telling Sabrina this. December is my month where I, uh, 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 I don't fool with nothing like that. People calling, telling me about people dying. What is that to me? What is that to me? Sabrina said, how you feel? I said, I don't feel nothing like that. That's low to me. I said, don't talk to me about that. Because you already, if God didn't tell me to raise them, I don't care. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Because December is my month where I take time for myself. So why bring me ministry news in December? She says she ain't understand it. Well, I ain't trying to get you to understand it. I don't have to explain to people stuff that I have already disciplined myself. That's, it's amazing the fellow, over there, the fellow over there in the bar, though, he understood. He said, John, you got to do something. You got a man, you work so hard. He said, you got to slow it down. No, no. I'm like, no, no. This is my discipline. See, whenever somebody is trying to go overboard, 
of what you're saying. But now here's the thing. You got to learn how to not penalize them because Jesus showed us in the Bible how not to penalize them. Y'all want to find out? Let's try Luke 30, 23 and um, 30, Luke th uh, 23 and 33. Luke, let me see if that's the right script you want to go to. I'm just kind of working off of BJ's. Uh, this ain't his iPad, though, y'all. This is somebody else. Who, 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 where he got this from? You? Who he got this from? Who you got this from? Huh? Girl, you ain't. Oh, Jesus. Look at what it says now. Luke, Jesus teaches us something. This is what Jesus teaches. See, you got to learn. This is easy for forgiveness. Y'all ready? All right, I'm going to let y'all read it. And when they were 32, 32, 32, 32 verse, 32 verse. They back up. They back up. Okay. Take it so long. I got to work it out. And there was also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. Guy on the right hand guy. Jesus is so cool, man. Oh, I love all this. I love the Lord, man. Come on. And when they were come to the place, which was called Calvary, Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and one on the other hand, on the, on the left. Look at what Jesus says. He says, Father, forgive them for they slow. <laughs> he said, they don't know what they do. In other words, they, see, see, you can't forgive a person acting out of ignorance, void of knowledge. I'm talking about folk who know they're wrong. I was talking to a, 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 a member, well, let me just put a former, well, I don't know who, who she, what her relationship is. She still sees me as pastor, put it that way. And so uh, we were talking the other day, and she said, I was at a funeral the other day, and someone asked, where is Pastor Briggs? She said, you know in December, this is his month. He's not going to be here, so don't even worry about asking that question. Now, she hadn't been here in 10 years, seemed like, and she was wise enough to know this man don't play any kind of game. It has to be something. Let me tell you, it's got to be real. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let me tell you something. It's got to be God has to tell me because my discipline is that I, and so she, she, she stood and said, you know he ain't going to be here. He's on vacation. He's taking time off for himself. In other words, Pastor, I defended you because I already, we already know. I ain't heard you say it because I ain't been in church in four or five years. But what I do know is I know your discipline. Your discipline is in December, this is what you're going to do. Now, I forgive everybody. God, don't let them know it because Jesus told me how to do it. Get me back to the scripture. Get me, hurry up. I got to go. Where's the time went? All that shouting engine them was doing. Jesus said, Father, do what now? For they what now? Now, wait a minute. How can you make that statement? You can only make that statement if you got the word of God in you. Remember, the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Remember the word of God. See, my heart will show me they don't know what they're doing. I talked to my staff and I said, well, how, how are you going to handle that? I said, that was a violation of my discipline or they didn't know no better. There's some people don't know no better. I already understand that. So the people that don't know, and you got to judge that. The people that don't know any better, guess what you got to do? Say, Lord, forgive them. Have mercy on their soul. Lord, forgive them. Do what now? Have mercy on their soul. That's what you do. But the folk who, the folk who... <laughs> They got to own that. Y'all understand that? Here's what God is telling me. God's telling me much of what he has for us is in the warehouse because we won't follow certain disciplines. And he's getting tired of us using him. God's getting tired of us wanting everything from him, but we won't trust him. God's getting tired of us wanting him to answer every prayer, but we pray for him on the run. God's getting tired of us. When he bless us, we act like we did something. God says, I want the glory. God's getting tired of us wanting us to bless him, but we fail to recognize we got to forgive those if we want him to forgive us. God's getting tired. We got to come back home, y'all. No, no, I, this is not, this ain't going to make you shout. That's why we did that at the early service. 
This right here deals with your heart. This deals with your heart. This deals with your heart. I, in ministry, ministry is all about a heart thing. It ain't about no work. This is a heart thing. If we're going to be a people of God. Last night I was looking at the football game. I was looking at the Jaguars and the Titans. And I noticed before the game started, 30 minutes before the game started, both teams came out and decided to take a knee and pray for my main man, uh, uh, DeMar. Isn't that, that's what God's all about. The world is showing the church what they ought to be doing. Not a player, not a coach, not an assistant coach. Even, even the news media wanted to get in on the prayer. But it's a shame the pastor called for prayer. Man, I don't feel like it today. But when you're going through, you want everybody to pray for you. You got to change. We got to get back to, we got to get back to loving Jesus. We have gotten so excited about how blessed we are until we have allowed our blessing to put, become our demise. We got to get back to Jesus. So in closing, there's some ingredients. BJ, I won't, I'll come back to them um, next Sunday. Th this yours right here? I ain't know you had scriptures. I'm so proud of you, boy. Y'all give him a great round of applause. The boy got scriptures now. I'm going to give you five ingredients that makes up the big picture of you improving and growing in life. Number one, your focus. You always learn, start concentrating on your life more than quit concentrating on other people's lives. You, you understand what I'm saying? Start, concentrate on your life. Ooh, that's good. I feel like prophesying right now. Okay, start concentrating on your life. In other words, you're only as good to anybody else as you're good to yourself. Oh, Lord, I wish I had some help up in here. Focus on your life. You got Turn to uh, 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 the bigger picture is concentrate on your faith. In other words, concentrate on your ability to trust God and take action. Concentrate on your faith. Quit trying to have faith for everybody else. Quit trying to believe for everybody else. Come on, stop right now. If you're going to improve and grow in life, you got to tell your children. Like, let, let me tell y'all something. If I done taught y'all how to pray. Now, the new people, I hadn't gotten to y'all yet. Don't worry about it. I'm going to teach you how to pray. I pray for the new. But y'all see, you people, you've been here. Let, let me tell you, you got prayer dripping off your weave. Look here. Don't be calling me, talking about being a greet me. You pray until you can't pray no more. <laughs> Help yourself locate your faith. Now, the new people, I got you. Pastor standing in the gap for, and I pray for everybody. I pray for my church congregation, all 10,000 of them. I pray, but I'm telling you, come on. Some of you, some of you I, I'm not answering your phone calls because you're too old. You've been, in, you've been at this church too long for you to be trying to use me as an escape goat. Did you go to God first before you call me? You need to be going to God first. And if you don't get an answer from God, then you come talk to me. And I will know if you got an answer from God. Because my conversation is God-driven. Uh, uh, Tierra called me the other day. Tierra called me the other day. She sent me a text. And, and she sent me a text. And she, one of them halfway long texts. And when I read her text, I read, I read her text. Yes, I read her text. I read her text of her faithfulness. I read her text. And when I read her text, I knew then that she had been thinking about it. It's weighing on her and God didn't give her an answer. So I called. And as I began to talk to her I, she, on the phone, I could hear the so She said, oh, sir, thank you so very much. That's good. I got it. God gave me a plan of action to tell her how to think, how to pray. And if she prayed to God this way, she's going to get her answer. But if she had not gone to God first, God would Listen, I'm not God. I'm the pastor. I'm the son of God. So you got to focus on your faith. You got to you you got to live by faith. You got to pray. You got to ask God. Now, Grant, now him. Let me say this for this. The liar started. Well, he said he don't pray for the people. You lying from the pit of hell, and I, I hope you bite your two tongue or something. You understand? No, I shouldn't say that part. But anyways, I'm saying you go to God first. Check out your level of confidence in God. Number three. You assess the favor, always assess the favor that God has given you. In other words, favor is the sufficient grace for what you need on your journey. You always, you assess the favor of God. Ask yourself the question, have, have I been favored by God? I mean, you can say it, but I'm talking about look at the experience. Right. The experience of it. 
you assess your favor. Man, have I been favor? Man, God, thank you. The, the last night, last, last night, last night, uh, 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 I, I, was, I was hungry coming back, looked at the game, did work on my lesson a little bit, and so I stopped up at Spinks to get me some ball peanuts. Y'all, they got some good ball peanuts up there. Well, you from Colorado. You don't know no better, so you don't. So they didn't have the regular peanut cups, Mr. Wineglass. Well, you know, I believe God is a big God, so I get, a big, I get one of them big cups. See, if they'd have had the small cup, I'd have got the cup. But since they ain't had no cups, I got the biggest cup in the restaurant because I serve a big God. And I don't want a little bit. I want a lot. So I walk up to the guy and tell the guy, I say, hey, man, I had to use this cup right here because y'all didn't have the other cups over there. He says, oh, don't worry about it. I got you. I say, you sure? Because you know you got to say, don't, don't, don't start praising God yet because you don't want to walk out there and that beep will go off on you. You're behind going to jail for ball peanuts. Come on, holler at me. <laughs> Plus, I had somebody on the phone with me. I always have a witness when I'm kind of out a little late at night. I don't, I don't move around by myself. You know, trust me, I always got a little security going on with me now. I got a bunch of security around here, boy. I'm telling you right now. And so he said, no, no, for real, man, I got you, man. You good. You go ahead and take that. I walk out the door, tell the person on the phone. I said, man, that's a blessing, man. He give me these, all these pins here free. She said, praise God. Same grace. <laughs> not, not she won't boil peanuts. That's not what she was saying. She was saying, I want to be favored like that. See, sometimes you got to look at what others have done for you out of the goodness of God. it with favor like a shield. Now watch this. If you don't ever experience anything like that, I'm telling you something wrong with you. Yeah, you forgot that scripture. Sowing sparingly and bountifully. You got to maintain fellowship. Don't let nobody fool you. It's important. It's important now. It's important for the bigger picture for you to grow and improve and grow in life. You got to maintain a tight fellowship. Quit forsaking yourself for something. Quit hanging around the same old people. Where all my country girls at? Where y'all at? Wave at me. Country girl, wave hard. Wave hard. Put high. Put your hand high. All the country women, I'm going to talk about Miss Price because I know they grown. They, DeRoche will beat me up if I... They love hard. Them country women love hard, don't they, DeRoche? They want to be with you every day, all day long. They just want y'all to always have home fellowship and all that stuff. Well, you got to let them know the world is much bigger than your two and no. Look, look at Nita over there rubbing her husband. He, he, look at she over there rubbing him, baby. Don't listen to that pastor on that one right there. You got to understand. Listen to me very, very closely. You got to understand. You got to learn to maintain fellowship. You, you, listen to me. There are a lot of people out there got your answer. Yeah, right. That's right. And you got to quit judging people because you got something feeling. You got to go with who's, who's got your answer. You got to be led by the Spirit of God. Yeah, you got to be led by the Spirit. What was that? I was coming, I was coming from a... Uh, 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 up the Monk's Corner area the other night, and I was led to go to this place. I'm sitting in this place. Boy, it's the best place. Boy, I was so comfortable. Boy, I was sitting up there relaxing, looking at TV and looking at little, little sports and stuff like that, relaxing my mind, because I don't take my problems home. I don't take situations home. I de Darryl, I decompress before I get home, So because I don't want all that foolishness in my house. When I come home, I like to laugh and joke. I don't even want to go through all that, all that stuff like that right there. So anyhow, all of a sudden, this lady sits beside me. Then her husband sits, and I'm sitting there, and I'm having fun. Oh, and, and, and then all of a sudden, she starts talking. And she starts talking about jitsu, and she starts talking about, and then she said, well, I took pastor. boom, 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 and pastor, and she kept saying pastor. And so I said, oh, this is good to me. So when she turns around, Bernard, I says, um, so uh, tell, me, um, tell, me a little bit about, tell me a little bit about all this stuff you know about martial arts and all this stuff. And, and she goes and said, tell me what you do. She says, well, I'm the security, head security for my pastor's wife. So, he, so her husband says, oh, yeah, my wife and... She does this and that. And I said, okay. She said, I'm federally trained. She said, we, I can travel with him all around the country. Well, I said, oh, oh, keep talking. So I said, I have some people I want. I, I need to get this done. So she, she says, okay. She said, well, here's my name and my number. And um, uh, I was thinking about you, Andre. So she was trying to tell me. She started doing all that stuff on my arm. I said, hey, I'm the one you're supposed to be securing. Get off of me. You don't supposed to be 
showing me what you do. So I said, okay. So she goes, oh, no. She says, um, I know the head people over at Seacoast's church. She said, phenomenal. They're going to get you through the whole, they'll get your people through the whole federal situation. She began to ask me some questions about how my church security is now. And so I began to tell her, she said, okay, you want to change a few things? She says, but I'm going to get you in contact with them. Wednesday, we're going to make contact with her. We're going to go and we're going to start the process with uh, bringing our security team over to Seacoast that they train us so we can be federal. So Andre can travel anywhere around the world where I go and he can travel and he'll be federally notar notarized to do that. Just because I was led somewhere and there is my favor sitting right beside me. And then finally, so you got number one, your focus, number two, your faith, number three, favor, number four, fellowship, and number five, family. Close out, family. Family is the big picture, the ingredient. If you're going to improve and grow, watch this now, you have to have a caring community around you. Now, I know when you heard me say family, y'all thought I was talking about your wife and your husband, your sister, brother, mama, dad. No, 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 because some of them ain't with you, so ain't no need to do that. Your family in God's eyes is a caring community of people that will surround themselves around you. You got to have a caring community. You got to have loving people. You understand what I'm saying? You got to be around people that's like your family. You know, many of you, there are many of you in this church are like our family. Many of you have spent, we have spent Christmas together, Thanksgiving. We've celebrated special times. It's like our family. You know, we're really, really excited. Uh, uh, the Hewitts have just entered in. They've always been our church family, but now they are our family because they are the godparents of our grandson, sir. So, they, so we're like, now it's a whole nother game. It's a caring community. Now, Laura and me and Sabrina had an argument about you the other day. Laura said, Laura said, she's going to get the baby. I said, hold on, I'm going to tell you right now. They ain't going to be having my baby. My, my grandson need to come see his papa every now and then. So I was a little salty the other day, Laura. I'm going to just tell you. But I forgave. But it's a family. You've got to have a caring community. And your caring community is not just you and your four and no more. People of God, I'm going to come back. I want you all to come back next week and listen to me closely. Let's start this year off getting back and getting grounded in what God appreciates. I know we've been in church a long time. Stand to your feet, but let's start this thing off right. I got to get it. I got to get it in you. Don't give up. Don't quit. But your heart's got to get right. Your heart's got to get right. Come on, we who love God, let's get people back into the love of God. Can we do that? Let's get people back into prayer. Let's get people back into trusting God. Come on, man, let some of this foolishness go. Let me tell y'all something. If, if, if you over 25, you should be maturing by now. Come on. We've been, in, we've been around God too long. Let's love one another. Hallelujah. Amen. That's Christ right there. Yeah, everybody have differences. But I'm telling you, if God can bring 12 people from 12 different walks of life together and they make, they, they, they do amazing things, surely God can bring thousands together and we do amazing things. Y'all with me on that? Those of you who are watching us around the globe, thank you so very much for giving me extra time to teach you the word of God today. I trust that you got blessed, got blessed teaching you. I'm excited about what God has done and what he's about to do in our lives. Remember, we're driven to improve and grow in life. It's God's plan for our lives. I will not, I will not this month go by without challenging you to the core of your heart, your belief system that you should always get grounded and rooted in the things of God. Listen to me closely. I already know our future. God has great plans for us, but we don't want to be so excited about the plans that we walk away from God's plan. And that is, we love God and love his people, live by faith and glorify his lives and open our hearts up to respect and allow God to be glorified through everything we do. Listen to me closely. If you're watching me from around the globe and you say, well, pastor, you know, hey, I understand it. I'm ready to make a choice. I'm ready to make a Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Be saving Lord of my life. If you pray that prayer, I promise you, he will answer your prayer, grant you your request. And as a result of that, you will have a right into the tree of life as God has already done it.
If you have done that, if you pray that prayer for the very first time out of the sincerity of your heart, hey, listen, why don't you reach out to me and let me know. Seven eight eight five five. It works. However, however you do it, get in contact with us and let us know. Thank you so very much. And if you'd like to be a part of this great church, you say, hey, man of God, I'd love to be a part of this church. You can be one of our e-members. You would just have to, and that, that same email send all of the information. I want to say to all of my e-members, I have not gotten back to some of you. I, I do have them on my desk, and I will be after the 10th of this month. I will be reaching out to many of you. Thank you all so, so very much to, to my e-members who I talked to the other day out in Tennessee. Hey, head toward Texas. Let God do what he said he's going to do in your life. So, was so excited about talking to you and sharing and having the opportunity to minister to you. Hey, in North Carolina, I'm going to be giving you a call. You're next in line. I got the emails. Thank you so very much. We speak blessings in Wilmington, North Carolina, and blessings over your life. Hey, listen, God bless you. Thank you so very much for allowing me to minister to you. We'll see you around. Let's give them a great round of applause. Hey, listen, if you're in here today and you say,